Thanks, Brenton. Uh, as host for the day, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Annabel Sheehan. Uh, Annabel is the, is the CEO of the South Australian Film Corporation. Um, she's had an enormous amount of experience in the Australian screen industry, not as a film star, but on the fundraising and development of the film industry, particularly in Western Australia, uh, where she was before she joined SA Film Corp in February 2015. She has been closely associated um, in, uh, in post-production work uh, on films like Dead Calm, Mad Max 3, The Piano, Fearless and The Portrait of a Lady. She has a master's degree in arts and cinema studios from New York University and a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from the University of Technology, Sydney. Ladies and gentlemen, Annabel Sheehan. Thank you so much for having me today. I'll just turn down here to get the technology going, if you'll give me a, a moment. OK. <laughs> so the SAFC, I hope you don't mind the title, Business or Pleasure. Um, a lot of people are not quite sure whether we're the arts or the business, and I'm here today to tell you that we really are about the business. Um, South Australian Film Corporation is a government agency established in 1972 by South Australian Government and Don Dunstan to stimulate and encourage the development of the South Australian film and television industry. It was the first agency of its kind in the country and is rightly considered the birthplace of the renaissance of the Australian film industry, with films such as Sunday Too Far Away, Breaker Morant and Storm Boy, and projects like Picnic at Hanging Rock and Gallipoli shooting here. I put a little timeline together so you can see what's happened over the something like 44 years. You'll see the films that have played a big part, and that's only some of the highlights. Um, you'll, we were a production house from 72 to 94, and then became more of a, a grants and supporting agency. We support filmmakers, projects, productions and production companies and funded movies like Red Dog, which broke Australian box office records in 2010, or Ten Canoes, which won in Cannes in 2006. Um, our glory is not past glory. Some people don't realise that we've continued consistently to perform well nationally and globally. Uh, most recently with Girl Asleep, um, a windmill production with South Australian Film Corporation that was in Berlin Film Festival. And only recently, the January 2015 Australian Academy of Film and Television Awards, um, two South Australian projects were centre stage. The Babadook shared Best Film Award with the major essay project Russell Crowe's The Water Diviner, shot in the Flinders region. So it's a very consistent body of achievement. I'm going to drill down a little so you know a little bit more. You probably all remember Breaker Morant. So a great SAFC project produced by us and in our state. Um, it ticks all the boxes of the top things you could do in the nation and across the world in cinema. Nominations in our national awards, then called the AFIs, they're now called the ACTAR Awards. Uh, an Academy Award nomination, pretty amazing for an Australian film. And screened at the Cannes Film Festival, the top festival in the world. Uh, similarly, Shine, made by South Australian director Scott Hicks, you've probably all heard of him, who continues to make great movies to this day. He also hit all the categories, um, national awards, seven Academy Award nominations. I don't think beaten by any Australian film until this year with Mad Max. Um, and of course, Geoffrey Rush actually winning for that. But the box office, $89 million worldwide for Shine, and that's not counting DVD sales, so pretty good. And just recently, The Babadook, a scary horror movie, the first movie ever shot in the new studios in South Australia. Um, succeeding in festivals all over the world and released theatrically in numerous territories, um, doing very big business at box office in Europe. Ninth in the UK in the opening week, fourth in Germany, number two in Spain. So we, South Australians, can speak to people across the world through their cinema. And $13 million in international box office, pretty good for a film that only costs three. Um, and strong sales in other areas, not just at the box office. Um, 
you don't have to read that all in detail, but what it's telling you is that this consistent performance across the decades with our awards at a national level, these are all South Australian films, um, Storm Boy, Breaker Morant, Snowtown, Red Dog, The Rover, etc., Last Cab to Darwin, all supported or shot in South Australia, predominantly produced and financed by the South Australian Film Corporation. So it, one of the things that me coming from a life in Sydney and then a bit of time in WA is I've always known about South Australian Film Corporation and South Australian film, and it is one of the most significant film sectors, film industries in Australia and very well known around the world. As you'll see here, these are the top four film festivals in the world. Cannes Film Festival, Venice, Sundance, and Toronto. And South Australian films have performed well in these contexts. Now, when you think that Australian films, generally it's marvellous if we get an Australian film into one of these festivals. We've had 10 SAFC-supported films in Cannes over the years, three in Venice, seven in Sundance, and 19 in Toronto. It's an extraordinary record for, this, for, for Australia, let alone just this very state. I think we should, I hope you'll all come away today feeling much more aware and proud of what South Australian filmmakers can, can achieve. And it's not just in film, it's in television as well. Um, all of these were shot in South Australia, um, financed by the South Australian Film Corporation and involving South Australians. I think you'll all remember McLeod's Daughters being here for eight years. Um, we need another TV series like that, it'd be great for our industry. So it's a fantastic industry. Um, I've got a trailer, um, that, that it's a four minute trailer celebrating the four years of, um, the, sorry, 40 years of the South Australian Film Corporation. I'll just run a little bit of it because we, we're probably pressed for time. So that's the building that the SAFC offices are situated in. It's sort of 10 minutes from the centre of the CBD and you probably all remember it as um, Glenside Health um, Mental Facility. Um, it's a beautiful building, heritage building, that's been transformed. We're there and 32 of our tenants are there too, forming a fantastic creative production hub. Um, of which Mr. Reed is a member, a uh, tenant. And so we have producers, directors, documentary filmmakers, sound editors, picture editors, animators, designers, casting agents, all housing their production offices in that gorgeous heritage building. Um, 
An extension of the building, we move into the state-of-the-art studios called the Adelaide Studios, which are out the back of the building. The South Australian Government under Mike Rann decided to create this fabulous facility and it was opened in 2011 and it's made up of um, what you call big sound stages where you can construct whole sets. It's got a mixing theatre, screening rooms, three sets of production offices. It's an extraordinary facility and one that has been uh, really significant in growing the film industry further and taking it on towards its next level. In just over four years, Adelaide Studios has hosted the production of nine features, eight television series, including four major broadcast series, um, 10 commercials or so, 20 features and 12 TV series have used our mixing theatre or Dolby and Foley studios. So you can see it's getting a great deal of use. And over the past two years, um, these state-of-the-art studios have attracted television productions to our state, which is a really important thing in terms of jobs and spend. Anzac Girls, Deadline Gallipoli, Sam Fox and Wolf Creek, the TV series, all contributed a huge amount to our economy. Um, they injected $25 million into the local economy just over the last couple of years. So it's a fantastic thing to have this studio and to build the industry here. Um, just talking about money, uh, I want to talk about the contribution of the screen sector to the economy generally and um, locally. It's a $1.8 trillion global industry. It's $5.8 billion nationally, and that's what this slide talks about um, down at the base of it. 5.8 is the total direct and indirect spend, and 46,000 full-time equivalent jobs in the screen industry across Australia. Um, in South Australia, we did a similar study um, in the 13-14 financial year and, and found that the direct and indirect, indirect contribution to South Australia's economy from the film industry was $77 million and 750 full-time equivalent jobs. We also found that for every what dollar that the SAFC put into production investment, it triggered $10 new dollars, $10 from an external source into our state economy. And in that same year, South Australia recorded its highest national share of production for drama, sharing 9% of the national spend in drama. And so it's, um, it's a really significant and great industry to be part of. Complex ecosystem. Uh, it's made up of creative, innovative companies and personnel that use very advanced technologies. Um, and it's a business that's run like a military operation when it's in production. Um, average crew size would be about 100, but sometimes you're looking at 250 like on Water Diviner or well over 1,500, 2,000 on something like X-Men. Um, and so with the reliance on high-level technology and all this kind of activation of large numbers of crew, it really is advanced manufacturing. The reason I've brought up Rising Sun is to talk about the extraordinary ecology that exists in this very state. Rising Sun Pictures is a jewel in the crown of Adelaide. It is a visual effects house that does, um, it's been associated with some of the biggest global films in the, and such as X-Men, Gravity, Harry Potter, Ga Great Gatsby. In fact, two Academy Award nominations to Art Rising Sun Pictures for X-Men and for Gravity. They've actually even won a, an Academy for Technology because they invented some really useful technology that is now used all over the world in visual effects. They've got, uh, when they've got a big project on, they employ 180 staff. And during one project alone, their staff spent $160,000 on cappuccinos. So just think about the indirect, um, <laughs> indirect uh, value of any one company. It's just amazing to think they're here, a few minutes away from where we are now, working away on, I'm not sure what they're on now, but the next movie coming out is Tarzan, and they were part of that too. So um, fantastic company. Uh, in a handout that I've got, if you wish to take it when you leave, there's a full summary of the economic contribution and it tells you a bit more about Rising Sun. Also tells you a bit more about Anzac Girls. Don't know if you all watched it. Highest rating Gallipoli show on telly in 2015. Shot with us in 2014. And um, a huge crew of, you know, there of over 100. 58% of its $9 million budget spent in the state. Um, 20 SA businesses used casting, accommodation, catering, equipment. So the indirect spend is, is extraordinary for these companies when they make a show here. 
So, um, and as you see, lots of different people activated by a production. Directors, screenwriters, production designers, set construction workers, painters, props people, editors, etc. And lots of business people, producers, investors, accountants, lawyers. So, very diverse group of people getting involved and activated by the screen industry. Um, now, this little slide here, I've created myself. It's not very high art or anything. Um, I've just pulled it from the multi-screen report that uh, Oztam puts out. And that's just to signal for your interest a bit of a shift in the screen economy that you may have experienced already. And that is the way in which people use and consume content. And just to let you know how that's impacting on the SAFC or how we're responding to it. You can already see there's, a, there's big trouble for time-based television, television that you have to watch when they tell you when to watch it, um, which is that um, watching live television in 2011, 100 hours a month, it's dropped down to 82 hours a month by December 2015. Watching playback has gone up from five hours a month to nearly nine hours. And of course, other screen usage for the television set. In other words, using your TV to watch YouTube or Netflix or whatever. And that's not even counting the way we use tablets and, and mobile phones. So a huge change in the sector as a result of this. And in fact, um, main broadcasters are, are struggling with that drop in, in, you know, in particular the 14 to 34 age group. Age group. At least 20% 20, 20 of them don't even bother to watch what we now refer to as time-based television. Everyone wants it anytime, anywhere. Um, you may now be aware that instead of the big companies, well, they're still around, 20th Century Fox, MGM, and in our own country, Channel 7, 9, 10, etc. But new players, Google, Netflix, iTunes, Amazon, Yahoo, Facebook, these are the companies that are beginning to be the big behemoths of screen content delivery. And so it's been really interesting for the SAFC to be part of that and to know how to respond. So just wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the things we're doing in that space. So we funded Wolf Creek, the TV series, but guess what? It's really an online series because it was funded by Stan. And you may know of Stan as the sort of Australian Netflix uh, owned by Channel 9, six-part drama series, injected over four million to the SA economy, 500,000 views in the first day, four days, broke all Stan's viewing records but shot here in this state um, just late last year, once again showcasing, showcasing fantastic landscapes in South Australia. Here are the Philippu brothers, South Australian cult YouTube heroes. Um, SAFC funded YouTube um, project they did last year was up to, what was it? Something like a million views over two days and now it's 19 million views. All their work online has attracted 2.7 million subscribers. So they're pretty much the same as Foxtel at 2.9. Um, and they've had 300 million views of the material that they create and put online. And this is just a pair of guys from South Australia. And they've just been named in Variety, the international global um, industry newspaper, as in the top 10 digital rising stars in the world. And they're South Australian, fantastic. We've also recently funded um, a new initiative with the ABC. So we've got five um, six by five minute online series. One of them is about an Uber driver, and uh, another's about um, another's a documentary about prisoners working with greyhound pups for healing both sides of the story. Um, so three comedies, two documentaries will be screening on ABC iView. So as you know, that's like an online platform, but. Um, so we've been working closely to try and get new things going there. So uh, in other words, we'll always fund big budget projects, but we'll always be looking at new talent and, and new South Australian talent and trying to bring them through. Um, finally, I just wanted to mention our Aboriginal Screen Strategy. We launched that just a few weeks ago with Frank Lampard and Leanne Buckskin, who's our executive. And we've, we've, we're really excited that we've, the SAFC has shifted some of its uh, government appropriation towards pushing more and more towards Aboriginal filmmakers in South Australia. We really want to be the next wave of Australian Aboriginal filmmakers coming from South Australia. They've got fantastic stories to tell and a great vision. And our first, uh, we had our first workshop was last year. We did five mini docs, 
and one ended up on the front page of The Guardian and they screened on NITV and now we're about to have a drama workshop in a few weeks' time uh, training five new drama directors. So we're really excited about that initiative and um, just generally looking to attract production to the state and build the capacity of the state. So I really thank you for your attention in learning more about the SAFC. Rotarians, after that presentation, I'm sure there'll be some questions over there. I can't see who they Yes, Stephen. Um, I believe in terms of outcome, South Australia, just from that picture, is, is an amazing story of how we achieve. Um, in terms of as a drama centre, we are usually higher than WA, higher than Northern Territory. It's very hard to beat Sydney and Melbourne, that are the two centres for screen production, but I think we do very well. We are, um, we, we, with respect, we are not funded to the level uh, of those other states. We get 4.7 million, Victoria gets 22 million, um, Screen New South Wales something like 10 and has just announced a further 20. So we do a lot with what we've got uh, here in our state and so I do think we punch above our weight in terms of recognition internationally and in terms of the quality of the work and the filmmakers that, that are grown here. We do lose them to other states and internationally um, but I, what my goal is to create a really strong pipeline that will retain our crews here in South Australia. You look at Wellington, a much smaller city than us. Peter Jackson's built a huge industry there along with New Zealand Film Commission. There's no, nothing to stop Adelaide being as big as that in terms of its, its yearly um, output. Thank you. Next, next one. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, It's a good question. The screen industry is a highly subsidised industry in Australia and um, I was going to give you a slide about how you fund an individual feature film. We as a government organisation provide approximately 5 to 10 per cent of the total budget. The producers themselves uh, get a, can get a tax rebate from the Australian federal government of around the equivalent of 35 per cent of their budget. They can seek private equity funds, they can seek um, money from the market, they usually need a distributor like Village Roadshow or you know, Weinstein Company to also give them 10% or 15% as an advance to create their budget. So the budget is made up of many, it's a really complex thing to fund a feature film, a lot of moving parts all having to be signed off in parallel. Um, some films really do return very strongly for their investors and in wanting to know, if you wanted to know more about that, it's it's rare at the moment for equity, private equity investors, but it's something that I think is building. The Australian box office made $88 million. Australian films at the Australian box office made $88 million in 2015. They can return on investment, and I think we're getting a lot more savvy. So there's been really great returns for some investors involved in the film industry, but it's, it's diverse and project-specific. Any more? Just one more. Yes, Steve. Yeah, I mean, Rising Sun, Kojo, both those companies, big South Australian companies, um, they are um, visual effects companies that use technology, um, and they it, visual effects are parcelled out all over the world. So when they do a scene from X Men, another scene's done in Montreal, and another scene's done in London. So it's indeed exactly as you say, a very global industry. What drives people to use a place is one. Of course, they have to have the technology that is compatible and up to date. But it is people, it is skilled people, creative people. R Rising Sun has attracted some of the most significant VFX 
producers and artists from England and all over the world to work and live in Adelaide. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting business and um, we should be very proud of, of both Kojo and Rising Sun. Rotarians, we've heard, a, we've heard a wonderful presentation today. Uh, I, for one, and I'm sure a lot of other people, really don't think about the South Australian Film Corporation very often until you see the credits on the end of a film. Well, we've, we've you know, to be reminded that we had had some of those wonderful programs made here in South Australia since, the, I guess, the mid-1970s, um, and, and, and to keep ahead of the pack and publicise Australia, and particularly South Australia, and to have a CEO who's able to carry that load and increase that profile, I think we are really indebted to Annabelle for her talk today. Please join me. And as a token of our appreciation, I'm presenting Annabelle with a little pen. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, everybody.